I had the weirdest dream about the baby last night. Oh, was it a boy or a girl? Oh, it was a boy. A goat boy. <laughs> half goat, half boy. <laughs> Gross. Do you think it means something? Well, we don't know where the goat half came from. I want a goat boy. Would everybody please stop talking about my baby that way? Hey, remember last night when I felt a move and we both thought it was an elbow? Yeah. What if it was a hoof? <laughs> huh? Honey, we are not having a goat boy. But even if we were, I'd still love him because he would be ours. Hmm. Ma. <laughs> it's not funny. Okay, thank you so much. So, what are the cool kids at school wearing these days? Usually what I'm wearing. Well, without the elastic. <laughs> well, I hope this will do. Because your mother just got called for her first substitute teaching assignment. Oh, please say you're not going to be at my school. No, actually, I'm at Van and Cheyenne's. Oh, then congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're going to be teaching at my high school? I didn't know you were a teacher. You seem so nice. <laughs> That's how I put Brock through dental school. I always planned to go back after you kids got a little older. Mom, do you have any concept of the unlimited embarrassment this is going to cause me? <laughs> Wait a minute. You walk around your school pregnant and my being there is an embarrassment? Yes. <laughs> such short notice, Mrs. Hart. Isn't it ironic how just a few months ago I was trying to force your daughter out of our school and now I need your help. Ain't that a kick? <laughs> well, this is your classroom here. Thanks. I'm really excited to get back to teaching. I've always loved to help kids learn. Oh, don't expect to teach anything. Being a substitute is just glorified babysitting. If you can keep your students from tearing up the furniture, you've done your job. Well, have a good day. And don't let anybody get pregnant. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Montgomery. <laughs> so what do you guys want, a boy or a girl? It doesn't matter, as long as it's human. Oh, there it goes again. Put your hand here. I felt it. It's so weird. <laughs> All right, this is a school, not a petting zoo. Why would you say petting zoo? What are you doing here? Oh, I'm substituting today for Mr. Swanson. Hey, me and Eric are in your first period. Eric and I. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, look at that. I already taught you something and class hadn't even started yet. <laughs> this is so humiliating. What are you talking about? Your mom is so great. Yeah, but did you see those shoes? <laughs> class. My name is Mrs. Hart. Drop the paper, turn off the TV, and you and the red hat sit down. How'd you do that? A teacher never reveals her secrets. I'm gonna figure you out. Good luck. Now, it says here you've been reading Romeo and Juliet. Our teacher doesn't make us read. He just let us watch the movie. <laughs> is that right, Chuck? How'd you know my name? I told you, I've got special powers. And it's written on your backpack. <laughs> Look, it's been a while since I've been in the classroom, but trust me, I know all the tricks. There's not a trick that's ever been done that I haven't seen or done myself. If you want to go at... <laughs> okay. That's a new one. <laughs> Can do it, but I can. I don't know, son. When 
you rather play the football or one of my golf clubs instead of a broom? Hey, the teacher's home. Hey, Reba. What are you doing here? Well, what are you doing taking a job without consulting me? I'm sorry. Aren't we getting a divorce? I got to tell you, I don't like the idea of turning our children into latchkey kids. I smell your influence here. It was Latchkey that gave it away, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that Kira called. You know, I think it's something we ought to discuss. Hey, doesn't anyone want to ask how my day was? How was your day, Mom? No, thank you very much. Well, I started my day off sitting in a booby trap chair. Then some genius stuffed paper in the heater, which started a fire. And then two of my students in my last class went to the bathroom, never came back. Why in the world would you want to put yourself through all that? I love it, and it challenges me. And you know what? I've forgotten how good of a teacher I was. Well, that's great, Reba. You know, I sure would feel better if there was someone here at home with the kids. Oh, Brock, Kira is more than capable of watching Jake for an hour and a half. But if it still worries you, you can close your office early on the days that I work. Well, I might just do that. Except on Tuesdays, I have golf. And on Fridays, I have golf. But call me if you need anything, kids. You know my schedule. I thought so. Here, kids up. Hey, guys. Hey, Mrs. H. Boy, you should hear the good buzz you got going at school. Oh, you know how I thrive on good buzz. Now? Yeah. So, everybody, we wanted you to be the first to know. Eric and I are getting married. <laughs> oh, my God, you're pregnant? What? No, we're in love, just like you and Van. <sighs> are you sure you're not pregnant? Oh, yeah, we're sure. <laughs> we were going to wait till after graduation to get married, but we figured, why not? Congratulations! <laughs> oh, it is going to be so cool having another married couple at school. Yeah, why don't you just start a club? <laughs> Kids, this is crazy. Have you talked to your parents about this? Well, no, we were afraid they weren't going to be as cool as you are. I mean, how did Shine and Van tell you? My seven-year-old son found the pregnancy test. You should have seen how cool I was then. <laughs> Mom totally freaked at first, but then she came around. I am so excited for you guys. <laughs> Cheyenne, Van, can I speak to y'all in the living room? Yeah. Stay single until I get back. <laughs> what are you doing? You know it's a bad idea for those two to get married. I know, it's crazy. She's not even pregnant. <laughs> so? They're in love. I think it's cute that another couple wants to be like us. Cute? Bunny slippers are cute. <laughs> you are married, pregnant teenagers. You're not supposed to be role models. <sighs> Can we help it if people want to be like us? <sighs> yes. Those two are your friends. We got to go in there and show them how tough marriage really is. That's going to be really hard. Guys, you do know that this isn't for everyone, don't you? Yeah. All right. Then put on the sad face and get back in there. <laughs> oh, isn't that sweet? Quit it. I'm sorry. Have a seat. Shine and Van would like to talk to you about your decision. We might make being married look easy, but you know what? It isn't. It really, really isn't. <laughs> Well said, Van. Yeah, and it, it may be fun a lot of the time, but there are some times that it is, it is, woo, it is not fun at all. Not fun at all. <laughs> they get it. I don't think they do. The chances of a teen marriage surviving is next to nothing. The chances of any marriage making it is less than 50%. Yeah, look at my mom. <laughs> But right now, we're talking about them. But Mrs. Hart, look at Cheyenne and Van. They're so happy. Look, I know their life looks like love and kisses, but there's a lot you don't see. Cheyenne? Uh, yeah. Like, um, well, like space. You know, when you're dating, you want to be together all the time, but when you're married, you really miss time to yourself. I feel like he's crowding me all the time. 
I'm crowding you? And that's the worst part. He doesn't even know it. Well, maybe you feel crowded because you're looking at the same face every day and realizing you never got to shop around and date other people. Oh, so you wish you dated other people? Yeah, yeah, I thought about it. In between crowding you... This is the time you're going to be going to college. That's when you meet new people. Go to parties. Choose a career. Why would you want to tie yourself down to a marriage and possibly kids? Yeah, why? If your love is as strong as you say it is, it'll wait. Why do you want to rush into a marriage? Come on, you can tell me. Remember, I'm cool. To be honest, we're ready to take the next step in our relationship. You mean sex? Yes. <laughs> oh, come on. That's not a good enough reason. Marriage is a huge responsibility that you just, just don't jump into because of hormones. Well, now I don't know what we should do. Yeah, I, I, I guess we should talk about this some more. Now you're being smart. If Cheyenne weren't pregnant, there's no way I'd let her get married. Thanks, Mrs. Hart. You're welcome. See ya. Woo, we dodged a bullet there. <laughs> you guys were wonderful. Good job. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Any more milk? Nope. Great. I'm sorry. Maybe you could go to the store and shop around for some more. Oh, are you trying to get me out of the house so you can have more space? Oh, stop it. I just said that to keep Eric and Marissa from making a huge mistake. Huh? Like we did? Yeah. You know why tie themselves down? Now, Marissa can go to the college that she wants to, whether they have a football team or not. And Eric can uh, accept a scholarship to Notre Dame, no matter what their married housing is like. And Marissa can spend her junior year in France like she's always dreamed of. Right. And Van... I mean, Eric... can join a fraternity and do a lot of really stupid stuff. Well, if that's how you feel, why did you marry me in the first place? Well, excuse me for wanting to do the right thing. Maybe it wasn't the right thing. You didn't have to say yes. I'm sorry. I didn't know any better. I was young. The gentle sin is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims, ready stand to smooth the rough touch with a gentle kiss. Now, Chuck, what do you think Romeo is asking here? I guess he's telling me he wants to kiss her. But I don't know what pilgrims have to do with it. <laughs> It's just more of a poetic way of asking. Miss Hart, poetry might have worked back then, but today, a dude needs a car. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. Try a little poetry and a nice pair of tights, and you won't believe the attention you'll get. <laughs> Excuse me. Mrs. Hart, I need to speak with you. Now? Now. Oh. All right, continue your reading. And remember... I can see through walls. <laughs> What's going on? Juliet's about to take her dirt nap, as Chuck would say. Your services are no longer required. We're hiring another substitute. Why? Marissa Devon's mother just phoned me. She told me that she walked in on her daughter about to have sex with Eric Rovner. Oh, man, so close. <laughs> Imagine Mrs. Devon's surprise to find out that it was all your idea. What? You didn't counsel them to have sex? No, I told them they didn't have to get married just to have sex. Oh, that didn't sound right. <laughs> See, they wanted to get married so they could be like Van and Cheyenne. That sounded worse. But I made it clear that teenagers should not get married. They should have sex instead. No, I would have never said that. They misunderstood me. Mrs. Hart, it is bad enough that you allow your daughter to go around flaunting her big mistake, but it is not okay for you to suggest that others follow in her footsteps. They came to me asking for advice. What was I supposed to say? 
the policy of this school is that sex doesn't exist. <laughs> How's that working for you? I'm sorry, I've made my decision. So I'm losing my job because two kids almost had sex? You're being replaced because you put the idea in their heads. To have sex? It's in every teenager's head in America. And most of them don't even know me. <laughs> Teachers have to be role models. They can't go around promoting this type of behavior. I'm not promoting anything. By allowing married teenagers to live and have sex in your house, you are. Oh, good, Rita. I'm glad you're here. You know, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this job thing. I overreacted. I support you going back to work, and whatever I can do to help out... I got out... fired. Oh, well. <laughs> How did my life get so twisted around? One day everything's going just fine, and the next day I'm a poster mom for teen marriage and teen sex. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened? I gave some advice and it was misunderstood. Two of Cheyenne's friends want to get married because Van and Cheyenne make it look so fun. That's ridiculous. Everybody knows marriage isn't fun. <laughs> Have I made it too easy for Van and Cheyenne? I mean, let's face it, they got it pretty darn good. I gave them a nice wedding. They have food on the table, warm beds to sleep in together. <laughs> I can see where it would look appealing to a lot of kids. Well, what were you supposed to do? Throw them out in the street? His folks did. You wanted to. No. I said send her away. <laughs> look, every family has to make their own decision. There's no one right answer. Now, you did what you thought was best. And you know what? It was a brave decision. You took them in and you've let them live as normal a life as possible. Well... At least they're going to finish high school, even if I'm not. You are there for them every day. And I don't know that I've ever thanked you for that. No, you haven't. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I never meant to be a role model. Hey, you know what? I think you're a pretty darn good one. Hey, it's a work day. Shouldn't you be playing golf? Well, I thought it was more important to come over here and talk to you. And it's ladies day at the club. <laughs> weren't going to make it, why would you let us get married in the first place? If I'd have said no, would you have listened to me? Don't I always? Huh. Well, the condom speech certainly didn't take. <laughs> All right. We probably would have eloped anyway. And I'd be living in a trailer somewhere, barefoot and pregnant. <laughs> oh, honey, it wouldn't have been that bad. We both know you'd have found a way to buy shoes. <laughs> Cheyenne, we all know that the odds aren't great for you and Van. But I never said you can't make it. You know what? I thought if we loved each other enough, everything else would take care of itself. Well, the good news is, you have a better chance of making it, as long as you understand how hard it is going in. Hey. Hey. Got milk. You want to marry me? Huh? You heard me. Knowing what we know now, would you still marry me? Would you still marry me? Yeah. Do you, Van, take me to be your wife? Even if you didn't get a chance to shop around? I do. And do you, Cheyenne, take me even though 
I'm taking away your privacy and you can't go to France? I do. And do you take me even if I give birth to the goat boy? Yeah. <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> If you ever have any more questions about sex, you come to me. No, Mom. I think you covered everything. <laughs>